You might be surprised to learn that there's a whole world of heaters out there beyond the ones you're probably using. Heaters come in all shapes and sizes and they've got some pretty great ways to keep your home warm when you need it most and in this video we're breaking down 12 different types so that you can navigate the heating world a little bit easier if you ever want to explore new options. <laughs> Now here at Monkey Wrench, we spent over 15 plus years collecting knowledge in the field, and now we're passing it on to you so you can make a more informed decision the next time you need to upgrade your heating system. Hey, if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing as we are constantly adding new videos on all things plumbing, heating, and air. Now let's jump in. Today, we'll learn about the different types of heating systems. Let's jump in with one of the most common heating methods found in many heating and air systems, and that is a furnace. A furnace takes in air and heats it to the thermostat specifications using electricity, natural gas, oil, or propane. Once the furnace heats, and that heat travels through the heat exchanger while air passes over to create hot air. From there, the heated air blows through the ventilation in the home with the help of the fan motor. Now next up, we got boilers. While boilers date back to the 1600s, they have newer iterations and are present in many homes across the United States. Boilers can use natural gas, oil, biodiesel, electricity, or propane to produce heat. These systems work by generating heat that passes through the heat exchanger, the water or steam then travels to various radiators throughout the home. This makes boilers hydronic. Next up, we got in-floor radiant. In-floor radiant heat takes a different approach to heat with tubes carrying heat located underneath the floor. In this case, electricity or hydronic energy produces heat. The heat produced by the electricity or hot water circulates throughout the pipes beneath the floor to create radiant heat stemming from the floor, which creates an even distribution of heat throughout the home. Now, let's talk heat pumps. Heat pumps are unique in a way that they can produce both cold and hot air. Heat pumps work by transferring heat from one place to another using a series of components that are powered by electricity. Another way heat pumps perform the same process is by using the geothermal method to transfer heat from the ground outside. And in your home, this is a pricier method to install, but can have a lower cost to operate thanks to the ground's more consistent temperature. Next up, we got electric space heaters. While this is one of the simplest heating systems on the list, it's also one of the most common. Electric space heaters are a cost-effective way to heat smaller rooms or specific areas within the home in warmer regions. These heating systems work by changing electricity into heat. The process for infrared heaters is like how a toaster works, with electricity heating coils transforming energy into infrared radiation. Infrared heaters aren't recommended for larger rooms since they direct heat towards people and objects in their immediate vicinity. On the other hand, convection heaters take in air from the room and pull it over an electrically heated surface before circulating it back into the room. Active Solar Heating One of the more complicated heating systems, active solar heating uses solar panels to capture energy from the sun and store it to use at a later time. These systems achieve their purpose with solar energy heating liquid or air, which is then pumped or pushed into heating the home. Hybrid heating. Hybrid heating systems are ideal for regions with intense weather. They're comprised of a heat pump to handle daily duties and a furnace to ramp up in the winter months, ensuring adequate heating year round. These systems typically use natural gas or electricity to heat. A benefit of hybrid heating is that both components get a rest, reducing wear and tear and promoting a longer life cycle. A baseboard heater. Baseboard heaters are often part of the discussion around in-floor heating due to their location. These systems stick out from the baseboards on the walls and use convection to heat the home with the help of heating coils flanked by fans which provides the same rising hot air functionality of in-floor heating. Unfortunately, one of the issues with the baseboard heaters is that while they're 100% efficient in turning electricity into heat, they cost more to heat a room than other alternatives. Coming up on our list is the gravity furnace. Often located in the lowest point of the home, gravity furnaces rely heavily 
on heat rising to perform their function. They do not have many moving parts and simply take in air from a duct before passing it through a heat exchanger and letting gravity lift the heated air through the ducts. Gravity furnaces can use propane, oil, natural gas, or electricity to produce heat. While gravity furnaces became popular in the 1800s before fizzling out halfway through the 20th century, they are still found in homes. It's recommended to swap these units out in favor of something more efficient and modern. Ductless mini splits. In contrast to traditional furnace-based forced air heating, ductless mini splits do not require any ducting. Instead, each individually placed air handler in the house connects to an outdoor compressor. Ductless mini splits worked similarly to heat pumps by transferring heat from one place to another. These systems are also unique in that they cool and heat. While ductless mini splits and HVAC systems share some things in common, they do not match the cooling and heating potential of a traditional heating and air system. And of course, let's not forget the good old fashioned fireplace. Fireplaces are a great source of heat in communal areas. Some homes may have two fireplaces, with one on each floor for more heating. Fireplaces can be gas-powered, electric, or wood-burning. Each option has its merits, but going with gas or electric will involve more work in terms of insulation. Another downside with fireplaces is their limited heating ability. Unless you're right in front of a fireplace, you won't likely be warming up quickly. Wood-burning stoves. Like a fireplace, wood-burning stoves have similar functionality and limitations. Wood-burning stoves often appear as large metal stoves with a glass door out on the front where wood is placed and a chimney for exhaust. While their appearance is desirable to people, wood-burning stoves don't provide whole house heating like other options. Okay, so we've looked at plenty of heating systems, with some being technical, and others being as simple as adding a log to a flame. Determining which heating system is best for you can be tricky, but this breakdown has given you an idea of the various options available so you can make an informed purchase when the time comes. If you found any of the information valuable in this video, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe as we are constantly adding new videos on all things plumbing, heating, and air.